All right, good evening. Well, uh, I can start on 5.30, so thank you for venturing out in the cool afternoon and uh, coming to listen to some subject information for next year. It's always hard to believe, this is this back in the end of last night, the year 10 to 11, that it's amazing how early we start the process of talking about the next year, um, just all of the things that have to fall into place. So it's, uh, it's a good opportunity to hear the information early and then so that as we go through the next few weeks and the next term, and then we get into looking at things like timetabling, all of these bits and pieces have to fall into place. So we start now so that you've got all the information um, first hand as early as possible and you can start to really think about what your pathway is. So that's probably the big difference between this subject information compared to last year. So you might be thinking this is similar, going to be very similar to what we would talk about for year eight to nine. There is a fair change so in terms of some of the information we need to share with you because you are actually entering the senior phase once you hit year 10. So year 10 is, opens up a whole new world of possibilities in terms of pathways for year 10 students and they need to start thinking uh, deeply about what it is they want their final few years of schooling to look like based on what their uh, future pathway might be. Welcome you guys. So this evening I'm going to be going into just briefly because it's quite overwhelming the first time when you start talking about Queensland Certificate of Education and those sorts of things. There's lots of acronyms, lots of terms that as year 10 students you will hear over a number of times again and again, year 10, 11 and 12 as we do your subjects but also as we track your achievement in the different pathway options that you go through. And obviously from a parent perspective, that's also something, the language you need to understand because you'll get more and more information about some of these things as we go through as well. I'm sure the big thing that you want to know a bit more about is the subjects themselves, and we'll certainly get to that a bit later on, and the subject selection process and what it will look like this year, and then an opportunity at the end if you need to ask some questions as well. So if you haven't met me yet, most people are familiar with me by now. Um, Joan Pellis, I'm the director of campus here, but I also look after all of the curriculum side of things uh, here at the college on the senior campus. So we had a bit of a change of structure this year. Uh, when Wendy Bowen left at the end of last year, a realignment. So I now look after the subjects and uh, the curriculum side of things and get to talk with students about all of these, this meaningful information about what subjects and what courses they might do. So a lot of these terms here for our year 10, you're not probably going to be overly familiar with yet, and that's okay, as I said, we're just gonna do a light introduction tonight. But the other person who becomes really important to the students in the next few years is Leah Bow. So Leah is one of our year level coordinators, but she is also our careers advisor. So she works in terms of year level, she looks after year 11 and 12, but she's heavily invested with a lot of year 10s because they start doing some of their pathway work. So we have a number of year 10s who are already doing things like school-based apprenticeships and traineeships. And so Leah is a very important person along with Joan Tesma to give that information and be a gateway between students and employment pathway. So that's another person who becomes really important to you when you move into year 10. So briefly about the senior schooling phase. So if we would sum up a big goal for all of the students as they get to the end of year 12 is that we want all of them to achieve either a QCE, Queensland Certificate of Education, or for a smaller group of students who need a much more individualised program, a Queensland Certificate of Individual Achievement, a QCIA. So that's what we, the goal we want. When you walk out the door at the end of year 12 is that you are given, you, you have your QCE, you've attained your QCE. We'll talk about how that works in a moment for QCIA for those very few students. And for some students, they also want to get their ATAR. Okay, ATAR is what allows you to get into higher education like university. But a stress in some students, not all students. Um, come on in. And why I stress that is because we, we certainly 
acknowledge that we have some amazingly academic students who want to get into courses like medicine and health sciences and in engineering and lots of different things, but that's not everyone. We also have a number of students whose pathway is vocational. They want to get into an apprenticeship or a traineeship early at school and then continue on after that. And they are all fantastic pathways. So as much as sometimes the media can sort of push this side of schooling and that's what success looks like, we know that success looks a lot different for other students. And it's a just as valuable pathway. So this is not everyone. Some people choose to get their ATAR, but they may never use it. And that's a completely acceptable pathway as well. But for right now, where you're at in year 10, know that your goal is your QCE. And if you know you're wanting to do something really academic, that's great as well. And ATAR will become important to you at some point. But we're going to stress more on the QCE side of it tonight because this actually does begin in year 10. We intentionally start your ball rolling towards your QCE in year 10. Okay? There's things that you can decide to do for yourself, but there are things as a college we've decided we want to do to kick you off in that direction as well. So as I said, year 10 really is the start of senior schooling because of these pathways that do open up to students as they get to that point. So some of the big things to be aware of is that in order to get a QCE, there are a few different requirements, which we'll look at in a moment. And I'm only going to focus on a couple of them because some of them are quite technical and they're really things that we worry about. We look at them and make sure that you, when you've chosen your subjects, that you've chosen the right balance. So there's some things that we stress more about than you ever need to stress about. Now, the big thing is that you need 20 points. So a QCE is 20 points, and if you've got older students, this might be uh, new information to you, but for year 10, that's probably something you haven't heard a lot about, is that um, you are going to need to gather a number of points through your subjects and other options. So before we get into that more, I'm going to play a little video from the QCAA. So QCAA is the Queensland Curriculum Assessment Authority. They're the ones that give us all of our subject syllabuses and set the demands that are needed for a QCE. So they provide us with a lot of information. So this video is a, a bit of an introduction into the QCE for you. Working towards Queensland Certificate of Education gives students the skills they need for the future, whether they plan to do the further study, learn a trade, or find a job after year 12. The QCE is internationally recognised and a sign of personal and academic success. QCE students can choose from a wide range of study options, QCAA general and applied subjects, QCAA short courses, vocational education and training courses, school-based apprenticeships and traineeships, and other courses like university subjects studied at school. To receive a QCE, students must achieve a set amount of learning at the set standard in a set pattern while meeting literacy and numeracy requirements. How students are assessed in QCAA subjects depends on what they study. QCAA general subjects have three internal assessments, set and marked by schools, and one external assessment, set and marked by the QCAA. In most subjects, the external exam contributes 25% to the final subject result. In mathematics and science subjects, it's 50%. QCAA applied subjects have all internal assessments set and marked by schools, except essential English and essential mathematics, which have three internal assessments set and marked by schools, and one common internal assessment set by the QCAA and marked by schools. QCAA short courses have two internal assessments set and marked by schools, while assessment in vocational education and training subjects varies depending on the certificate of your course. The QCAA has processes in place to quality assure internal and external assessment, so that students, parents, carers and schools can be confident that results are reliable and comparable across schools. Students' final subject results are published in their learning account in December along with their senior statement and QCE. So one of the things as Year 10 students we set up is your learning account, so it's access to your online account over Year 10, 11, 12, and you can track yourself what points that you gather towards your QCE. 
So in that video, you might have seen, looked and gone, well, there's talking a lot about year 11 and 12 subjects, why do you need to know, know that now? The reason it's important that you start to be aware of that is because your teachers are very aware of it. So when we're designing a year 10 course, we are very conscious of the skills that you need to be successful in year 11 and 12. So what we do in class in year 10, we are informing you in terms of through the types of assessment you do and through the type of work that we do, that we need to get you ready for year 11 and 12. Okay, because naturally there is a fairly big jump from year 10 to year 11. Okay, a lot of students find that to be one of the most difficult transitions in their school time. Because you go from uh, that more, less assessment, and not quite to the stand, a higher standard that you'll hit in year 11 and 12. So assessment can be a bit of a jump from 10 to 11. So what we are working on is how we make that transition smoother for you. So our year 10 course needs to be developed really strongly to make sure that we prepare you for year 11 and 12. And I think we're doing a really great job of that if we look at our senior results. So in terms of just picking apart some of the things that were in the video, as I said, some of these things you don't need to worry about. Things like set pattern, don't need to worry about that very much. That's for me to, to look at for you. But you certainly need set amount. That's the amount of points you need. And the set standards. So in order to get a QCE point, you have to pass that subject for that semester. So one point is for a semester of learning. So if you, uh, in year 11, you were to, to be doing, say, general maths, and you didn't pass, you got a D, you wouldn't get that QCE point. So that's why it's important that we know that you're on track to get your 20 points because every time you don't pass a subject in the semester, that means you miss that point, okay? That is not something that's a major concern for most students, but if they maybe don't get their subject selections right at the start, maybe a few things that aren't quite right for them, that can become a consideration. So you have to get a C or better in order to get a QCE point for that particular semester for that subject. So when you choose your subjects here, because we make, uh, make you choose six subjects, you're entitled to 24 points up front. So you've already got a four point extra that we allocate to you, plus what we do in year 10 to help you. So there's plenty of things that we build in to, to make sure that we give you the best opportunity to get those 20 points. And literacy and numeracy, all that means is you must pass a semester of maths and English to get your literacy and numeracy standard. So in terms of subjects, when we talk about senior subjects, we talk about general subjects, which are university focused and applied subjects. Okay, so they are the types of subjects in year 11 and 12 that we have to try and prepare you for in year 10. And then there are those other options as well around vocational pathways and school-based apprenticeships and traineeships. And not so relevant now, university head start courses. So some students in year 11 start to access university courses early and that gives them further credit they can then use as they prepare for entry into higher education. So just to give you an idea of how many points these subjects and different options give you, so normal subjects that we offer here at school, that's four points per subject. So that's when I said you, you do six subjects, four times six is 24. Okay, so each subject we offer here at school is four points. We do have some other ones though, and we'll see some of these when we look at year 10 shortly, that certificate courses, so things like certificate twos, they're up to four points as well. And certificate threes and fours, they're up to eight points. So for people who do school-based apprenticeships and traineeships who are often usually doing one of those certs as well, they are picking up more points by doing that embedded learning as well. So the big picture of this is you have so many different options available to you. Okay, compared to when I went to school, and I'm sure when your parents went to school, there wasn't as much flexibility. Okay, you are very, very blessed to be living now where there are so many different options available to you. Okay, so that we have students in year 12, I teach a year 12 girl who has got a, is doing a school-based traineeship, is ATAR eligible, and has got two jobs. So, and the jobs are not what she's doing her traineeship in. So she has got all open to her any possibility when she finishes here in the next couple of terms. I'm not recommending you have two jobs on top of your study load, but that's her choice. It certainly has given her flexibility. So there is no end to what you can do in terms of pathways. There's no one 
one size fits all in terms of senior. So please get that message that that is it's very much open to you in terms of what you do in senior. Okay. So just very quickly, just to finish up on ATAR, so something to be aware of when you do get to your 11 and 12 is that certain subjects allow you to get an ATAR um, more readily than others. So when you pick your subjects for year 11, if you want to get an ATAR and you want to get that direct university entry <coughs> pathway, then the, the types of subjects you choose is important. Okay, and when we do this same session next year, I'll talk more about that and just some things you need to be aware of. Okay, so again, this is all just to give you a little bit of a seed for when we come back to this again later on, either this year or at the start of next year, that all of these things are ahead of you in terms of making some decisions about those pathways. But for now, we're going to move into the, the key part of this, which is looking at our Year 10 subjects for next year. So the difference between Year 9 and Year 10 is a little bit more uh, rigour to your subject, so starting to increase the types of work, as I said, the types of assessment that you do, and the depth of understanding that you need to have in your subject. But there is also a little bit more choice in terms of a uh, number of subjects as well as some types of subjects. And when I show you some examples shortly, you'll see what I mean. Now, some things do stay the same, and they are some core subjects. So we start with things that you still must do as part of um, your core school. So these are non-negotiable ones. So we still do English, we still do Maths, Science, PASS, which is a combination of History and Geography. Religion and Ethics, so that's a change. So you do Christian Studies right now. When you get to Year 10, you start a QCAA course, so this is the start of your points. You start a uh, one of your Year 11 and 12 subjects in Year 10. So religion and ethics. So this will give you QC points at the end of year 12. So it's uh, again a bit of a lift in terms of the types of content that you'll cover in that topic. And it's probably a little bit wider in terms of the types of things that you'll discuss in class. Okay, it covers a lot more variety than what our typical Christian studies uh, content does. So it's still delivered by our Christian studies teachers like Mr. Meagle, okay, but it's, as I say, it's a set syllabus outlined by the QCAA. Now, you'll notice their HPE <coughs> goes, so it's no longer a compulsory subject in Year 10. So you can pick one of the HPE subjects that sits in that manner, but is no longer compulsory in Year 10. And hasn't been this year either. The other thing that we have you do is the short course in career development. And we deliver that through a careers lesson that's in your timetable. So if I just go back a second to the QCE, you'll see that one down here. Uh, what is the next one? What will be the next one? Yeah, short courses. Here we are. QCA short course in career education, one point. So we get you to do that in year 10. So at the end of year 10, you bank one QCE point from that, and you're on your way to banking QCE points for religion and ethics as well. So that's hopefully explains why I've gone through some of this for you in terms of why those subjects are important, because they start that journey for your QCE. So they're the core subjects. So what I said before was important, uh, an important part of Year 10 is that we start to prepare you for Year 11 and 12. So what we start to think about is what is it that Year 10 subject is leading into? So I've got a couple of examples here of uh, maths and science, so you can start to see the connection between what you will do next year and what's available in your 11 and 12. So next year you will do mathematics as a core subject, but there will be some students who will start to access higher level maths in year 10. So we have year 10 students right now who have already started their year 11 mathematics course, so mathematics methods. Okay, and if you've been to any of our awards nights, you might have noticed that at times where we have award winners who are actually in a younger year level. So they are accelerating and starting their senior maths early. So students who are identified in that group, they start to access things like mathematics methods. Okay, that's not for everyone though. For most people, mathematics will then go into one of those other choices. For students who are 
um, needing a lot more support for their numeracy, that we can offer a short course that gives them their numeracy tick for their PCE. And then the subjects that we run in our timetable are these four. Okay, so for students who are more interested in doing maths at a more of a trade vocational level, they would do essential maths. General maths is their core course, so that's the sort of the middle of the run. And then the more advanced courses, math methods and specialist maths. Okay, so again, we're preparing you for that. In the sciences, our general science course in year 10 has to cover a lot, okay, because these are the sciences available to you when you get to year 11 and 12 as individual subjects. So a year 10 course is designed to try and give you a taster of all of those. Probably not ag practices because that sits <coughs> with ag practices as a separate subject, but certainly these four, you will cover topics on those four in your year 10 science course. So by the end of year 10, hopefully you'll get an idea, do I want to do a science or not? And if I do, which one is it that I want to do? Because they are all different. Okay, there's very minimal overlap, so they're all quite unique. So hopefully that's starting to, to paint a bit of a picture of how important year 10 is in terms of how you start to make decisions about your subjects in the next few years. So now, moving on to our electives. Now last year we made the decision, and you will have experienced it this year as year nines, to move from full year courses to semester courses. Okay? And that was intentionally to give more variety. Okay? You choose three elective lines, and if we stuck with a year long course, it means you only get to, pick, to do three. And it means you don't then get to try maybe other ones that you are interested in because we've limited you to three. So now we give you six. So that's six different subjects or courses that you can try as you start to work out what you want to pick in your 11 and 12. Okay? The only exception to that uh, is German, because it's obviously the language is such an important thing in terms of developmental sequence, it is a year long course. Okay? And that's just in order to make sure that we make you successful if you were to pick it in senior, German is offered as a four year course. Um, Certificate 3 in Hospitality I'll talk about, it's a, again a bit unique because it's a two year course, but you'll, I'll explain more about it shortly when we look at the, the different department areas. Okay, so when you choose your subjects, just like you did for this year for year nine, you'll pick semester one and semester two. So two separate sets. And you can decide you want to continue in the same thing all year, that's fine, but you might decide you want to change and do something a bit different. So let's have a look at the departments and what they offer for year 10, starting with the arts. Okay, and the arts, it has got the biggest range of offerings. And I think that's <coughs> probably part of the reason why things like the musical last week are so successful. We have a very strong arts program, academically as well as the extracurricular side of it. So it's a very important part of uh, who we are and the level of performances that we produce. So. We offer dance, drama, film, TV, media. So we do have students in year nine doing media at the moment. It was offered to this year's year 10s, but wasn't popular, it didn't run for this year, for year 10. So we'll re-offer it to you though, if you are interested to see media through for next year as well. Visual arts, music, and this one is very, very hot off the press. Miss Eagleson is keen to uh, have a look at a new subject offering for students who are performing at a higher level within the performing arts. So this would be a more individualised pathway type subject. So this largely would probably be ones that the arts department would nominate or invite students to join. Because of it, as I say, it's very individualised for students who are working at a really high level in performing arts. So when you get your information about the subjects, it'll explain more about what sits in that course and how that process will work. Okay, but uh, in terms of just thinking about next year, so if you, if you remember back to last year, we did an Arts in Focus event down at Empire at the Armitage Centre. That's our every second year thing that we do when it's a non-musical year. So next year, we'll have that again. So the Arts in Focus, and that's where we show off our visual art as well as doing the small performances across dance, drama, music, 
uh, in the art literature centre itself. So that's the opportunity for students to showcase their work within the arts. And some year 10s historically have done some fantastic work in those areas. Humanities. So business, account and legal studies and journal. So they are all obviously linked to, again, senior type subjects. So year 11 and 12, these subjects are offered there. Business, focusing on entrepreneurship, that side of things. So often they will do uh, some project-based work. If you're already doing year nine business, you would know what I mean. Accounting, they will do things around tax, that sort of thing. So I think they looked at my tax and tax returns and accounting, uh, all of that fun stuff. That's your thing. Um, <laughs> legal studies, they did a trip down to uh, Parliament House, and uh, thanks to our old scholar Dave Janeski, he was uh, good enough to show them around, talk a little bit about our uh, democracy legal system, and German, which is obviously an extension of our Year 9. So if you're doing it in Year 9, you might choose to do it again in Year 10, but again, students might decide that. If they didn't do it in year nine, they would like to re pick up that language at year 10 as well. So they're the ones run out of humanities. Now, as I said before, PE no longer runs as a core subject. So in year 10, if you want to do a PE type one, it's called Recreation Performance or RAP. So this course is largely practical, okay? It doesn't have the health component, so it's not talking about health type things like. Uh, drugs and alcohol or relationships like we do in junior. This is very focused on things like fitness, sport coaching, those sorts of things. So it's a very practical subject and often is linked to uh, things like preparation for certificate three fitness that we offer in year 11 or the sport and rec subject. So they can get to do things like uh, work in different gyms. They might go and visit a gym for instance or get in some expert coaches to run some sessions so they get to see what coaching looks like in practice. Technology. So digital technology, so again, again it's things like coding, working with, uh, we've got some things around drones, those sorts of things that Mr. Me will start to put together, but largely it is that coding, robotics, that sort of thing continued. If you've done that in year nine, it's just a, again more a bit of an advanced level in terms of the amount of coding needed. Design is again an entry to year 11 and 12, the design subject, and that's one of the projects there. It's a mantle box that guys have been doing in the design this year with Ms. Bell names. Same principle as the year nine course, it's about giving you some form of design problem and you coming up with a product. That means that using the different techniques available to you. Something that's a, a little bit more unique though is the Certificate 3 in Hospitality. So this is your first real chance to engage in a certificate course here at the college. But you need to keep in mind it's a two year course. So the way it works is you pick it in year 10 and you do it all the way through to the end of year 11. And then in year 11, you've got the opportunity to choose either a subject or a different type of course as well. But this is a two-year commitment. So you need to keep that in mind that if you choose to get three hospitality, then you must choose it again then when you get to year 11. So it takes up one of your six subject choices. It's a fantastic course. So it's run in partnership with Aurora Training. So they deliver, they come in and do the practical side of it. And then you have obviously your modules that you complete on the side as well. And this test is part of the link between Aurora and our um, facility here. This is where the Edge Cafe, Tuesday and Thursday mornings, where those students learnt their skills. Okay, so what they learn there, they're actively applying it now at our little cafe here on the site on a Tuesday and Thursday morning. And we often get them to help with catering things as well. So things like open day, that sort of thing, they can join in and help us with those. Uh, event. So it's a great qualification for anyone who's thinking of going into the hospitality industry, working in cafes, restaurants, those sorts of things. So a really good opportunity, but just keep that in mind that it is a two year course. Ag practices. 
we heard Liam saying before how much he's enjoying ag practices, which is lovely to hear. So just to give you a, a bit of a perspective on where ag practices has gone and where we're going with it now. So last year it was running as a year 11 and 12 subject. But what we were finding is that by the time students got to year 11 and 12, if they hadn't had any experience in junior, there wasn't a lot going to pick it. Okay, because they didn't really know what it was going to be like. So what we decided to do was to bring it back down to year nine and then rebuild it again back up towards senior. So the year nines this year who have been in it, that's the first group. It'll stay in year nine, but we'll also be offering it again now in year 10 next year as well. And then it will become a senior offering again in 2025. So uh, I'm going to put you on the spot, mate. You want to talk about what you do in that class? <laughs> <laughs> you can talk to the pictures if you like. Uh, so basically what we've been doing for the past couple terms is that we've been studying meats from cows and learning how to tag them and record them and uh, put them into a system so if they get stolen, they can get tracked and all that We've been to a few properties, we go on excursion every fortnight, which was about double period. And basically we've been to a veggie place where they've been growing lettuce and broccoli and all that. And then we've been to my parents' property where they do partial improvements, where they make the ground better and all that, make it healthier for the horses and cows or whatever livestock and all that. And then for the past couple of weeks we've been going to our teacher's farm with Mrs. Warriner and we've been to a time when we did some cow ears and put them and put them into the um, pens and all that. And yeah, so it's basically just I guess trying to learn if you want to be a farmer or what bits you want to do and all that. Right. Thank you for doing that on the spot. So we had uh, Diamond Bar started the pasture at the top there, and um, Durraby Speck Speckle Park on the bottom. So as Lynn said, they've been doing quite a few. They've got another one tomorrow, going out and about. So very, very practical, hands-on. Um, we're also in the process at the moment of working with the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries to become one of the schools involved in what's called the Gateway Program, which is about ag tech and career pathways in ag. And so through that project, we can link more with industry as well. So we're currently looking at that as part of the growing area of ag practices. So very exciting. Now, before I mentioned um, a bit of a, a different type of subject that you can look at. So the, the arts one, the performing arts extension is one example, but this is one that we have run this year, which has been producing some fantastic <coughs> outcomes for students involved. So this is uh, like the performing arts one, one by invitation. So this is where we identify students and we see, uh, they often come from fields like design, where we see students with a, uh, a knack for thinking, big thinking and coming up with ideas and potential products. So this is run by Mr. Bishop, so he's our head of technology. And basically the concept behind it is for students to, to come up with a passion project. So something that they are really passionate about and then working towards something that is an outcome for that particular um, passion that they have. So the boys here, uh, we'll hear from them in a moment. We've got some little videos of the students who are in this group. And they've come up with a, a modified uh, feeder for small animals that they have been taking to shows and they're going to farm fest shortly to market this as well. So they're producing real world solutions to things. So we've got three videos to, to show you for, it's a small group, but they're all doing different things. So very wide variety. Mr. Bishop said right up front that he's not the expert in any of the fields, but he will help facilitate their research as they develop their outcomes. So we'll hear first from Alyssa, Kira and Kate as to what they're doing within Preferred Futures. All right, how would you describe Preferred Futures?
And how would you describe your project as working on this year? And what do you hope to learn from this? Um, we want to learn about the and the Thanks, guys. Okay, moving on to the boys who are behind the raw project. Oh, boys, how would you describe the third features? I would describe the third features as a time where you can work on your interests, um, the process agriculture, and I thought I wanted to do this from there as an opportunity. I thought it would be a good opportunity. Excellent. And um, how would you describe your project? Uh, so our project is a year long agriculture like we just did last week, so um, we are uh, in parts. And what do you hope to learn from doing this? Well, I'm going to learn a lot from welding and designing and marking papers and the lecture. And so, how do you say it? I'm going to say it's like a certain degree, but I've got to be thinking about what we're marking, like we've made logos, we can work on structure, a financial statement, so budgeting, and all of those great. from Yuri. Okay. How would you describe the features? Uh, choosing the project that um, things like and most of that is right here. And how would you describe your project? Uh, I'm doing what it's like to work with consistently. And what are you hoping to learn from doing this? Uh, I'm hoping to know my way around all the websites I'm doing here and they can start earning money. Thanks, you get the idea that I want to make money? <laughs> <laughs> <That's true. laughs> so, yeah, it's been a, a fantastic um, initiative that James has, has put in place with this preferred futures concept for Year 10. So I, I do think there's something that will probably grow in interest as uh, students see the types of products that are being produced by the students involved. So it's uh, really trying to tap into some of those 21st century skills that we know people are going to need in the future to, to create innov innovative products and solve some of those really complex challenges. I think the boys talked a little bit about things like climate change and the girls talking about the, the mental health challenges there that they are looking at for uh, women's side of things. So it's really exciting for them. So that's uh, again, it might be something that just perks some interest within the current year nines that they're really driven towards wanting to create uh, new solutions to, to these problems that are going on, then that certainly is an option. So even though we do invite certain students, if there's some, someone that is out there who really wants to be involved and just wants to be able to chat about it, then all you need to do is see Mr Bishop because he is, uh, he'll tell you all about it and uh, what's involved with being in the preferred futures group. So we are nearly at the end, but before we do finish up and give you a chance to ask questions, just in terms of the process from here. So we're trying to make it as really transparent and uh, gather as much information as we possibly can from you before we make decisions about subject lines for next year. So the first thing that's going to happen is that you will do preferences. So we'll give you a list of all of the subjects that we're going to run in year 10 next year and you'll preference those for your highest preferences. And it's really important that you do put a lot of thought into that because then that drives our line development. Okay, so the great challenge of timetabling is always coming up with lines that suit everyone, which is not possible. But I would like to think that we try and produce lines that cater for as many people as we can. But that's what makes those preferences so important and it's that you understand what you're picking Okay, so that's why we will give you a, a complete list of all the subjects and what's involved. And 
the challenge to you is to make sure that you choose subjects for you and not because your best friend's doing it. Okay, because that's not going to be what sets you up for what you're doing in the future. And that's sometimes the temptation, still, year 9, 10, is that we're going to do what my peers are doing, but you then miss out on the opportunity of really doing something that you want to do or getting yourself ready for what you need to do in the senior. So preferences are important, and we make sure every single person has done that, you generate the lines, and then you will see what's available to you on the lines. So year 11, 10 is going to 11, are currently going through that for theirs for next year, and all the next group then will so we build our time total based on that. So by the end of next week, you'll get the information about what subjects we're running, and you'll start your preferences, and they'll be due back um, at the end of the term, and then by the first few weeks of next term, you will get your line selections out to you, so you'll get to see what is running on what lines for you to choose, okay? Remembering that you get semester one and two, so that's the other good thing about 9 and 10, is that if you maybe don't get what you want in semester 1, you might be able to then still do the same basic subject in semester 2, just a slightly different course. Now, the last thing to be really aware of as you're heading to year 10 is our careers website. So Miss Tesfina is one who manages this, and she does a fantastic job of keeping this up to date with things like uh, career uh, jobs that are out there, so she'll update with jobs that get sent to us from, say, different training providers or directly from employers, uh, but it also links you into other things like uh, university, QTAC information as well. So there's a QR code I've popped here, so if you do have your phone and you want to be have that saved as a favourite, it is a great one to have because it is a really important site, for, particularly for the students who are thinking about doing things like school-based apprenticeships and traineeships from year 10, because you can start those in year 10, as well as thinking about things like work experience, because that's something that you will do as a year 10 student as well. You will do work experience at the end of term one. So you need to start thinking about where you want to do that, so that you're starting to really inform yourself about the types of uh, pathways that you want to, to take. So a really great resource that Ms. Tesman has put together there for you. All right, and we are at the end, so here's an opportunity for any questions that you might have. So with the lines, what will they be due? Uh, so the, uh, my goal will be to get them in, out to you probably by end of week one or week two, and depending on it, if I get out to you week one, it'll be, say, two weeks, so back at the end of week three, okay? So the, the goal for this term is just the preferences side of it, but we'll get that done, and then lines next term. Questions? Can the kids get access to what's available in year 11 and 12 so they can choose the subjects in 10 that will lead to the subjects in 11 and 12? As in what we offer in year 11 and yeah. 12? Yeah, well that information will be available um, soon because once the year 10s do their preferences, we'll publish those lines shortly as well. So the only thing to keep in mind is it can change year to year just a little bit. Um, Next year's group coming through as a small group, it's only 40 students, okay, whereas we're in the mid 50s for the following group. So actually, I think our subject offerings will expand, not shrink. So, what you see this year is probably a baseline for what there will be, could even be extra options the following year. But certainly, that'll be public, that'll be uh, something that we, we put up on the, on the website so you can have a look at that and see what we offer next year. That totally set what's in those lines. If we find there's two subjects that they're completely passionate about that clash, mm -hmm. can we come and see you, or is it set set no? You can come and see us. What I always say to the students when they get their lines is, if it's a major problem, come and see us because if there's enough, then we can always look at is there another way of doing this, and that sometimes happens with your seniors as well. Can't always give a solution because it is. Uh, obviously resource dependent as well at times and what we can do in terms of either teachers or actual physical resources but certainly let us know. Um, it does happen because the nature is that uh, students can have, you know, the lines will reflect what's most typical but some students have different, um, you know, they want to say do music as well as uh, a design that may not be the combination that other students choose so they may end up on the same line. Sometimes that's unavoidable um, 
not so much in year nine and 10, but year 11, we do have students who access learning through other providers as well. So for instance, through distance ed or through other Lutheran schools. So we do have networks that way as well. So if there's something that we can't do, we still try and look for a solution even if it's not here. Um, but certainly always talk to us, do what we can. Yeah, we usually say subject changes in the first three weeks. So give them three weeks to yeah, get a feel of whether it's definitely going to be for them and they can still change in that time. After that, yeah, we, we try not to because it does start to play with things like assessment and that sort of thing. So yeah, there's always a little bit of a, a time for that. as well. Any other student questions? So when we give you the preferences and the list of information, so as I said, your goal, your, your task is to make sure that you read that carefully. Don't assume that something you've done this year is definitely going to be the same next year. It might be a slightly different focus. So even if you've done, let's say, digital technology this time, and you think, oh, I know exactly what that will be, that is a subject that often the focus can change because there's so many different types of um, focuses within that. So read the information carefully. Don't just go on what you think you think the subject is about. It's important that you uh, make sure you read all the information you can. And involve parents. The students who are here, make sure your parents are involved. Because uh, it's just to give you a good perspective from them, from them, what they think your strengths are, and you know, talk with starting that conversation about where you're heading in terms of part of it. It's okay not to know, but it's important you have the conversations so that you're starting to think about those sorts of things. Well, thank you very much for coming along this evening and uh, enjoy the rest of your night. And yeah, we'll be in touch with more information as the, the year progresses. Thanks a lot.